Welcome back, Market Snipers. This is Jesse. We're going to take a little bit of a deeper dive. We're going to try to go as quick as possible. Try to keep this video about 10 to 15 minutes. We're going to cover the Magnificent 7. Are the Magnificent 7 stocks starting to sell off? Has the top been reached? Is there a double top on some of these? Well, <clears throat> that's what we're going to dive into the charts together and take a, walk, take a look at it. NASDAQ, some of the Magnificent seven stocks all have bearish divergence on the lower time frames. We've got reversal candles on the lower time frames. And the inverse of that is the dollar, the DXY, has had bullish divergence followed by a buy signal on the lower time frame. So it's still on the lower time frames. And right before the close of the stock market, uh, price is getting pushed right back up into it. So this is the NASDAQ chart that we're looking at. This is the four hour NASDAQ chart. So a quick recap, we saw this big move down, right? It was starting to get oversold, most likely bullish, di bullish divergence, right? Bullish divergence, followed by a huge rally to the upside on the NASDAQ from 14,150-ish all the way up to 14.5% all the way up to 16,200. It started to lose momentum, bearish divergence, bearish divergence, bearish divergence, reversal candle, right? This is on the four hour chart. This could be a lower high right here. And this is what we kind of talked about on the live stream. So if you're missing out on the live stream, definitely join us over there on the live streams. But you had MACD bearish crossover, MACD bearish crossover, and then another MACD bearish crossover. The difference with this MACD bearish crossover is it's below the zero line now. Below the zero line is bearish for the MACD. Okay, so we've got that out of the way, right? We did have bearish divergence going all the way back. Bearish divergence, bearish divergence, and then bearish divergence. Is price, is this a lower high here on RSI on uh, this four hour candle? If so, there was a sell signal right afterwards, and it looks like it could just possibly put in another lower high, kind of let the EMA catch up on the this four-hour chart, and then continue back down, right? It's back below the trending dots. There's a big move down to the downside. You have the trending dots are red and are trending down as well. If this was, if this was the high of the four-hour chart, this close down here just took out this pivot took up this pivot and so it just put in a low put in another lower high it'd be additional confirmation the eight hour chart was did have a pending sell signal there is also bearish divergence right there's also bearish divergence on the eight hour chart followed by a reversal candle on this is the nasdaq and you can see in real time it's flashing pending sell versus no pending sell so it is already pending a sell signal and the futures chart, the futures daily close doesn't close for another 40, 42 minutes roughly, right? So about 42 minutes. And then if it does close from a pending sell in the next 42 minutes, regardless if it does or does not, most likely if it's not this candle, it will be the next candle and then it'll have a sell signal because the four hour charts already got a, a sell signal and it is pending a sell signal on the eight hour chart right now. So that's what we want to kind of watch and take a look at, you know, even on the eight hour chart, we had, it was oversold conditions, reverse candle, and then took off to the upside. Overbought the orange candles, bearish divergence, reverse candle, pending sell to the downside. Okay, great. That was a great recap, Jesse. Now what? What are, we, what are we looking at? What are the targets to the downside? That's a good, that's a good question. And I'm glad you asked. <laughs> Who are you talking to? I'm just, I'm talking to all of you on the camera, right? So I've already mapped it all out to save time. And just a quick recap. Let, let's go back here. These are longer term downward possible targets, right? But we don't need to worry about those right now. Even though you took a, a low here and this is a, a, a lower low, and this is a possible double top, right? We don't need to worry about those targets yet. What we, The only thing we need to be concerned about is these targets right now because those longer-term targets don't come into play unless, unless 
the the fourth target doesn't hold, right? So this is what we'd be expecting on this retracement. Again, massive four, 14 and a half percent short squeeze. That is huge on the NASDAQ, right? And so maybe even take some time, right? Kind of battles out, battles out, comes down, battles out, right? If it does that, right? Then we'd be expecting the next buy the dip opportunity. Expect the next buy the dip opportunity. Expect it. Expect it. That's the retracement. That's the expectation until, until the targets don't hold, right? So if the targets don't hold and you start closing back below this final and fourth target on this retracement, and there are there are several reasons why we could see lower prices, but let's just take it level by level, step by step, right? So if price doesn't find support here, then we would expect lower prices and then price come back down here. If price does find support, then we're looking for that buy the dip opportunity, right? So that's what we're kind of watching on the NASDAQ. We spent more time on the NASDAQ, six minutes on it already. We're going to quickly go through the other charts because they all start looking very similar, right? So this is the game plan. And now we'll kind of like take a look at everything else. So SP500 was also pending a sell signal on the eight hour chart. Like I said, they're pushing it back up right into the close, right? So we're going to take a look at it here. I already mapped out the targets in the SP500. So you had bearish divergence, you had the reverse candle, sell signal, and now it's pushing back up. Will it put in higher highs? Possibly, right? Uh, but they push it within like the last hour right before close. And uh, we still got about 40 minutes left in the close. So let's keep going. That's SP500. In the inverse, we've got the DXY, right? So getting oversold, oversold, bullish divergence, reverse the candle, possible higher low, right? Possible higher low, buy signal, boom, hit target one already. So just hit target one. And this is, a, this is our fourth longer term target to the downside that never got hit right or no not the, not the long term hold on hold on hold on this is the longer term fourth target that never got hit in the dollar this is the fourth target that never got hit to the upside we talked and then this is the fourth target to the downside of this retracement here we talked we've been covering it every day in the live streams so you'll know what i'm talking about if you're watching the live streams over there and if not definitely go check them out right so <laughs> front might have front run this last this fourth target. They 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 push price up uh, and uh, took profits and moved price up right before this fourth target. Took profits after the third target. This one never got hit. This one never got hit, and it's already back up in this first target. Even if you go to the eight hour chart on this, so you got the eight hour chart pending a buy signal. So very similar, but the opposite, right? Very similar, but the opposite. So you got bullish divergence, oversold, right? Pending buy signal already in target one. You got target two, target three, target four mapped out. Okay, let's keep going. We're already at eight and a half minutes. We're rocking and rolling. NVIDIA, right? The Magnificent Seven. Here we go. Eight hour chart just had a sell signal. The, the eight hour candle just closed and we, we are pending a sell signal. It doesn't mean it couldn't retrace back up a little bit, right? But we just had a sell signal on the eight hour chart. We were watching it down on the four hour chart. And I kind of mapped out this shorter term box area. So here's the thing about NVIDIA if it doesn't find support in this, like, you know, maybe it kind of battles up still, comes down. If it doesn't find support and bounce, right, then we're expecting lower prices on NVIDIA, right? So this is kind of the similar box. If it doesn't, if price doesn't, find support in this box and bounce, then we're expecting lower, right? So we already have this longer term target that's already been hit. If price doesn't hold here, then we're expecting lower, retest this longer term target box to the downside. Then you have this one. And then of course, let's not forget. I won't let you forget. Let's not forget. NVIDIA has a 20% gap down here at about 306, right? And that has a confluence with target three of the longer term target boxes so that's what we'll continue watching nvidia let's keep going rolling in on 10 minutes right now uh we had a sell signal on the four hour chart for meta right 
again, bearish divergence, lower high, sell signal on meta, already smashed down to target one. We got target two here where the old massive 21% gap fill was, target three, target four. If it doesn't hold support, then we'll worry about lower prices from there, right? So these targets will act as support until they don't. That is meta, bearish divergence on the four hour chart, lower high, sell signals, keep going. Whew, Amazon, no sell signal on the four hour chart as of yet, but there was bearish divergence. So bearish divergence started to break down, it looked like there was, it was getting close. There was a pending sell signal on the four hour chart, but never had a sell signal on the four hour chart. Microsoft, bearish divergence, no sell signal yet. Tesla, bearish divergence here and here, no sell signal yet, right? Apple, there was bearish divergence and no sell signal yet. It was pending a sell signal on the four hour chart for Apple, but no sell signal yet. And last but not least is Google. So I kind of mapped this out. Price is putting in higher highs. This is a four hour chart, keep that in mind. This is a higher high, higher low, and then put in a low, right? And you could even say this is maybe at the time it was a sneaky lower high or back here, right? It was a it was a lower high, a lower low, squeezed all the way back up, possibly put in another low. Looks like it's another low. And then of course it'll be confirmed if it takes out this, this pivot here. So we had a lower low, a lower high, and you can I'm pretty sure this also had bearish divergence. Yep, bearish divergence, and then a lower high here, and then a sell signal, and it moved to the downside. That is Google. The magnificent seven looks like it might have found a local top. The Nasdaq, the SP 500 look like might have found a local top. There's no sell signals on the daily chart. A lot of them don't even have sell signals on the four chart. It's still really, really early. And in the inverse of it, the dollar looks like it might have found a temporary bottom. It's already hit target one to the upside. Again, front running my lower target here by like a, not even a dollar. So that's about it. Please like, smash the like button. Please smash the subscribe button and uh, comment if you have any questions whether that's on YouTube, the Twitter X app, or in the Discord. Thank you for all of your support. I appreciate you, and we will see you on the next 